I'm here with Gareth. Is that the way that you pronounce your name? That is how, how you pronounce Fantastic. my name. Fantastic. Yeah. I've had some people come here with names that I thought would be easy, and then they're like, actually, it's not John, it's Johan. Oh, uh, Johan? Or something oh, yeah. like I've, that. I've had Gartha and Gareth and Garth. Um, Gareth yeah, is pretty good. Gareth, yeah, yeah, that. yeah. It's very Final Fantasy. It is very Final Yeah, a bit Dragon Age, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you obviously get to meet a lot of fans by going around to conventions like Supernova. Mm -hmm. Does meeting the fans add a new dimension to what your character is to you? Do, do you feel a connection to your character even more so because of your experience at conventions? I, 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 I get a first-hand insight into what you know the, the effect my characters had on people, which, which mm. is which is sometimes very sort of very moving. A lot of people have come up and said, um, "Yanto um, has inspired them to come out," and a lot of girls, especially, have come up, come up and said they've they've. They've had a lot of empathy mm. with Yanto, and to, to, to hear that, that, that real people have had um, sort, of, sort of emotional connections to a character that's in a sci-fi show makes me feel good as an actor that, that I've at least done some of my job right. Um, and what's also brilliant about meeting the fans is, you know, with uh, with theatre, which I've been doing a lot of recently, you you get a, an immediate response from the audience that have just watched your show and uh, the round of applause or the or the, or the boos or whatever g gives you. Um, you have that relationship with, with the audience. Well, have think, you had many boos? Uh, not many, no. I, I did a panto a while back, and a few boos in that, which was troubling. So I was playing Prince Charming. Um, I don't think I should have sniffed the slipper. Um, <laughs> and yes, but what? Going back to what I was saying, Supernova, uh, things like Supernova, you you, you get that um, you get that response. Mm. First hand from your audience, even if it is a little bit delayed. Even if it's yeah, it's, it's not it's not immediate, but uh, at, le at least you, you get to meet people and get get that sort of true, true response to to, to your work um, first hand from, from from the fans. Hey, we are talking to uh, Francis Ajax uh, now. Um, Francis is is obviously a character from Deadpool. What made you want to create a character quite like this? Uh, to be honest, it was just that one line in the movie where it was like he got his name from an Ajax spray and white bottle and I went home, opened up the cupboard, saw a bottle of Ajax in there and I was like, I'm definitely doing that. Definitely going to make something that people are going to laugh at and I'm going to get the photos and so far the response has been really, really good. I'm here with Paul Bedford. He is an amazing author of oh, comics. Nice, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, that's, nice. that's why you're a guest. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's Tell nice me. to be here Excellent. after missing my flight. We, we won't admit that you missed the flight. Well, it's going to get around. It's already got around. I, I've had 15 people bag me out since I walked in the convention. I'm like, Bruce, like you know, Roy's like, ah, idiot, fool. You know, I'm like, yes, just walked through with my head, head down. But I'm here now, and it's awesome. You're here, and I want you to tell me a little about the work that you've been doing. Oh, this stuff? Oh, this is, this is, this is not for kids. This is not for the audience. I shouldn't say a word. Is that it? Is that the, in the, no, I'll, I'll tell you about it. Okay, my book, The List, look at that. What salesmanship, holding up the cover and everything like that, is a 200-page um, uh, psych horror. It's for the people who um, are a little messed up, so there's a lot of people here like that. There's people who like the dark stuff, like Seven, Preacher, The Crow, uh, and it's getting great reviews, it's getting a lot of good reader feedback. Maria Lewis is here with me. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure having you here. Can you tell me a little about your books? Uh, my book is called Who's Afraid? And mm -hmm. it's the first in a five book series uh, following the adventures of werewolf Tommy Grayson as she learns to come to terms with her powers and she learns to come to deal with the fact that she's a lycanthrope and that she has a monster living inside herself and that she's now part of this much larger supernatural universe. So if you like things like True Blood, a lot of like adult urban fantasy, then I think this is probably going to be the thing for you. I've heard it compared to Buffy before, but way more badass. <laughs> is that something that inspired you? Tell me a little oh, about the inspiration. Of course. of course. I think um, any, any woman who loves fantasy and who loves strong female protagonists and who loves that kind of meat in their stories was deeply influenced by Buffy. I mean, Buffy was kind of like an invisible third parent for me. I grew up on that show, always been obsessed with it. 
And um, it kind of was the gateway drug for me for a lot of high concept fantasy. And it's just, it's just the perfect story, you know, like it really holds up beautifully and you can go back and you can watch that show and it's, yes, okay, it's about a girl fighting vampires, but that's not really what it's about. There's so much other stuff that's challenged and examined in that show. And that, I guess, is kind of the idea with Who's Afraid. It's, yeah, okay, it's about werewolves on the surface, but it's actually about a lot more than that. And I wanted it to, to push a few boundaries in terms of, uh, you know, the ideas that we have of what makes up a, a female character, what makes up a female hero, and mm -hmm. the kind of flaws and complexities that they can have. I love that you're filling that niche. Can you tell me <laughs> why you're bringing it to Supernova? What is it about Supernova that draws you I to... I love Supernova. I've actually, I've been to Supernova for 10 years. This is my 11th year, and it's my first time as a guest. So I've been, I've covered it as a reporter for 10 years. And so it's a really interesting experience for me because it's kind of feels like I started out my career here, if that makes sense, and have always been on the other side of it. And now I'm like behind the scenes, like you're getting to see behind the veil. And so Who's Afraid is kind of the perfect place for it because I know the kind of people that come to Supernova and they're my people, you know, they embrace the stuff that I embrace. They love the stuff that I love. And I think one of the big things about Supernova is passion. Whatever that is, whether that's cosplay, whether that's anime or manga or TV shows or movies or stuff that sometimes, you know, the world can be an unkind place and people can pay you out for the things that you love where I feel like Supernova is a really safe, inclusive space and you can just come and be crazy passionate about the things you want to be crazy passionate about and embrace with those other fans who are just as into it as you are. 